Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. I'm waiting your appetite to my new book called Dare to Unfold, End Times Prophecy. There is a promise of blessings for reading the book of Revelation. Venture in with me as we embark on an epic journey of a lifetime throughout the most amazing, mysterious, and somewhat eerie chronicles, the book of Revelation brimming with spectral imagery. Do you dare enter? Some might immediately decline this curious offer. Why, pray tell? Perhaps you too have given heed to some of the same delusional warnings that many others have listened to. One might be leery of losing one's mind or even one's marbles after reading just one chapter or two. It does sound a bit scary now, doesn't it? Some see it as a spine-chilling read while others view it as a daunting task that leaves one with way more questions than answers. Personally, the more I read and learn about the book of Revelation, the more intrigued I become as faith, awe, anticipation, and joy well up within me. What is the book of Revelation all about anyway? Despite what others may have dubiously implied or intimated, this is a treasure trove of visions, warnings, encouragement, comfort, hope, promises, prophecies, judgments, battles, and romance. Let's not fail to mention demonic spirits, devils, angels, beasts, dragons, and all things Jesus. The book of Revelation, as you know, is the last volume in the Bible with the most riveting, awe-inspiring grand finale. To quote Dr. Curtis Dotson, Chancellor, Founder, and Professor of WordWise Institute of Eschatology, if you haven't read the book of Revelation, then you really don't know how the story ends. Let's get into it, shall we? For starters, this is imperative to know. For one to gain a deeper understanding of the book of Revelation, the word revelation means to reveal. It comes from the Greek word apocalypsis, which means to unveil. This is a study of eschatology, a word which originates from the Greek word eschatos, last or end things, plus ology, the study of, hence the study of end times. This will probably come as a surprise to some if not most, that is to say, out of all the books in the Bible, Jesus himself authored the sacred text, specifically the book of Revelation, and addressed it to the seven churches listed in chapters 2 and 3. It is a compilation of messages that our Lord Jesus wrote directly to us, God's people. Yet, it is the most ignored and avoided book in the whole Bible. Now, isn't that disconcerting? Besides, Jesus wrote it for ordinary people to understand. Sadly, humans complicate it. As we explore the annals of this twilight maze of visions, beings, supernatural splendor, and chilling horrors described here in the book of Revelation, we also encounter moving messages of hope, love, comfort, and triumph. Zoom in on chapter 1. And behold all the magnificent imagery of our Lord Jesus Christ. See the seven spirits around the throne. Hear what sounds like a trumpet. Envision the two-edged sword and those piercing eyes like fire. In chapters 2 and 3, pay close attention as Jesus says some challenging things to five of the seven churches of Asia Minor. Note that two of the churches, Philadelphia and Smyrna, get no reprimand or warnings from him whatsoever. Before approaching chapter 4, pause for a moment and focus on the first four chapters as a whole. See how they cover three timelines known as the past in chapter 1, the present, i.e. the church age, in chapters 2 and 3, and the future, its events and players, in chapters 4 through 22. Visualize chapter 4 as it describes the rapture, and 5 as it presents the seventh seal scroll. 
Chapter 6 depicts the genesis of the seven-year tribulation period, starting with its dreadful cast of characters, the four horses of the apocalypse, and what each one of them represents. In 7, we see the 144,000 sealed. Who are they? Then there is a multitude that no one can number. Chapter 8 begins with the opening of the seventh seal, leading us to a star referred to as Wormwood. In chapter 9, the locusts are released from the pit with tails like scorpions, after which four demonic spirits rise up out of the Euphrates River. In chapter 10, John eats the little book he gets from the angel. What is the little book? The plot thickens in chapter 11 as the two witnesses, a.k.a. the two olive trees or the two lampstands, come on to the scene. Who are they? What on earth are they here for? Chapter 12 opens with a sign from heaven, a woman with a crown of 12 stars and a dragon that pursues her and her baby. Who is she? What is the baby all about? Wait, <laughs> what was that? A dragon? This surreal mystery will soon be unraveled. Now we enter the darker side of the book of Revelation. In chapter 13, the rise of the Antichrist and his false prophet shake the earth to its core as the mark of the beast is enforced. In chapter 14, we hear a voice cry out, Babylon is fallen! This is followed by the sea of glass mixed with fire, seen in chapter 15, and the seven plagues that are being prepared for the earth. Chapter 16 has a disturbing scene as three gross demons like frogs are seen coming out of the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, not to mention nations gathering for battle at Armageddon. Then, chapter 17 presents the whore that sits on the beast with ten horns and seven heads, drunk with the blood of the saints. In chapter 18, powerful riches and all world trade are brought down in one moment for the whole world to see and mourn. Chapter 19 resonates with celebration and praises to the Lord for the marriage supper of the bride of Christ. Then, chapter 20 shows how the dragon, the devil, is chained and bound for 1,000 years and afterwards released. Then, all nations gather with him for the epic showdown at Gog and Magog. Are they surrounding the New Jerusalem? Suddenly, an intense supernatural flash of light appears, and it is fire blazing faster and faster. Okay, more about that later. In the next scene, there is a huge reckoning taking place. There is one on whom God takes perennial vengeance. Who is it? Then there is even more reckoning at the great white throne judgment for those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. The dreadful atmosphere is dark and ominous. There is such a terror in the air, an unbearable horror. Lost souls, as far as the eye can see, are utterly trembling. It feels so hopeless and overwhelming. Such a dreadful setting of doom that can leave one speechless, sullen, and sad. Fast forward to the next scene. On a much higher note, in chapter 21, John beholds the Lamb and his bride as he sees the new Jerusalem descending in all its glory, majesty, and splendor. Hark, hear the illustrious crescendo of praise resounding throughout all the heavens and the earth. Why is this? Because there is no more evil. Jesus, with his new name, the Word, is victorious and triumphant. Question, how? Answer, read on to know more. 
In chapter 22, zoom out slowly and soak in the luxurious scenic view of the most magnificent living waters, a river like dazzling liquid diamonds flowing straight from the majestic throne of God and the Lamb. Notice how the tree of life near the live sparkling river stands tall, yielding all its twelve fruits and leaves that heal. Now behold the Lamb, Jesus, the Word. Lo, He is ruler and King over all, all that is throughout the whole universe. He is the King of kings, Lord of lords. His majesty and kingdom never ends. He reigns supreme and we reign with Him forever and ever. Shout hallelujah. Give glory to His holy matchless name. He is the Alpha and the Omega the bright and morning star, Emmanuel, God is with us. Ergo, we will ever be with our Lord. Amen.